First and foremost, I would appreciate it that Michael, if he was going to make reference to the video from me on uh, my Majority Caucus on Joy News, mm. should not have just listened to a 60-second clipping that's been put out, but listened to, requested Joy FM to give him the full tape. I spoke in context, so Michael, go get the context and understand it fine. Now, secondly, when you say that people have rights, and I mean, Mike, we had this conversation on Newsfile about two weeks ago. I gave you a simple homework. I expected that you would do better this time. I asked you two weeks ago on Newsfile to show me what part of the Constitution of Ghana, the 1992 Constitution, gives people rights based on sexual preferences. You can't just come on national TV and say that people have rights. Rights are defined in Ghana's constitution. And this also deals with the misinformation put out by Dr. Amanda Odoi. Rights are defined in the constitution. Even the right to life can and will be curtailed by the state on certain grounds and bases. All the rights in the 1992 constitution are premised on the fact that they are not injurious to public safety, public health, and public morality. It is clear that the proponents of this pro-LGBTQ agenda read the constitution in bits and pieces and omit certain parts. Because if you read the 1992 constitution that you say gives you rights or gives the people you advocate for rights, did you read the constitution to realize that rights can be curtailed on the basis of public morality? And do you understand what morality and public morality is? Do you understand what public health is? Dr. Manda Odoi admits that in the course of their work, they have to deal with people who are at risk because of their sexual activities. And you don't think that that constitutes public health? And again, the misinformation. I, I don't know if she's referring to the bill that myself and my colleagues have altered. But you see, people have created their own impression of the bills and are, are fostering their misinformation and miseducation on people. First and foremost, I mean, several of the claims she's made here that you can't go and apply for a job. Why? When you're going to apply for a job, does anybody ask you who you slept with in your bedroom? Am I the one asking LGBTQ practitioners to define themselves by their sexuality? What happens in the confine of your bedroom remains the business of you and your partner. Nobody's coming into your bedroom to find out what's going on. But when you decide to define yourself by what is supposed to be your private sexual preference, then it becomes a matter of public policy and public policy will apply to it. And if this is all about funding for you, I am more interested in the sanctity of Ghanaian children and not the funds that you receive to do what you claim is academic research. You travel to countries like Qatar. Some of you travel to Qatar. Some of you travel to Saudi Arabia. And when you go there, you abide by the laws there. You just showed Nigeria. Nigeria's punishment is 15 years. Yet they go to Nigeria, they go to these countries and respect the law there. But think that Ghana should become a jungle because we think that we are yes, we are because we think that we are so liberal. The Americans who are funding you in American states, they are taking legis passing legislation to curb LGBTQ. Two days ago, Tennessee passed legislation in his house that banned the, the flying of even the flags. They've not just banned the activity. You can't even fly the flags in public schools right now. They're protecting their children. And so what they are rejecting in their own countries, you, have, you want to come and impose it here. In the United States, 27 out of their 50 states have laws that, that ban one form in one form or the other LGBTQ. That's more than 50% of their states. And yet you want to paint a picture that you are so academic. How academic are you? Are you, are you the places you are getting the funding from, in their own home, home countries, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is pointing out that homosexuality makes a person 400 times, a homosexual person is 400 times more likely to abuse substance and be, and, and be an alcoholic and be a drug abuser than a heterosexual person. And it constitutes a health crisis. A homosexual person is 400 times more suicidal than a heterosexual person. Not me, the CDC. It says that a person, a man who has sex with another man, is 400 times more likely to get HIV AIDS than a heterosexual man. And you think that this is something that we should allow you advocate for in the name of academic freedoms? Well, rights are definite. And I'll be glad for you to go and test the law in court and show to the courts what rights 
you are defending. And you see, let me just wrap up with this, Aisha, because I'm sure you want to bring in a few other people. It's extremely important that we understand that in this country, nobody is marginalizing any group of people. And Michael makes that point, that why do we need this law? Because you have Section 104 of the Criminal Offenses Act. Well, maybe, Michael, you should go and read the Attorney General's memo to Parliament. In that memo, the Attorney General actually applauded us because Section 104, if you read Section 104 in light of the Supreme Court's ruling in Banosin versus the Republic 2014, where natural canal knowledge is defined by our Supreme Court, you realize that Section 104 is discriminatory because it cannot apply to lesbians because it talks about penetration. And les lesbians do not have a natural organ for penetration. And so the Attorney General is unable to prosecute any female engaged in lesbianism under Section 104. And so when you have a law that is 1960, which at the time was dealing with what was the known form of homosexuality, and today you have transgenders, you have all kinds of, of, of insane perversions being bandied around as lifestyles, and we are making our laws representative of it, you say, why are we doing that? Come in. Very reverend, um, I, I want to bring you in now, and I'll give you the opportunity, Michael and uh, Dr. Odoi, to come in on this. Very reverend, you've been in support for this uh, from day one. Now it's been passed, so what? We have very reverend AJ. Yes, the church is very happy. The leadership of the Catholic Church is very happy with the passage of this bill. And we are praying and hoping that the president will ascend to this bill so that it becomes law. And congratulations to parliament for the help percent. And, uh, and that is our, our, our objective because from the Christian point of view, uh, uh, the law, the bill seeks to, to, to promote what Christianity is all about. Human beings uh, were, were created in the image and likeness of God. And throughout the Bible, homosexuality, lesbianism, whatever, has not been, they, have, they, have been, they are contrary to the tenets of the, the Holy Scriptures. So we, are, we thank Parliament for passing this bill. And we hope you come out of it. Thank you. Dr. Uh, uh, your group also talk about how this will affect the work of the media. I think you, you made mention about the editorial bit and then uh, uh, um, you, you, you try to differentiate editorial advocacy and all of that, uh, trying to say that what is in the law actually affects the job of, of the media. I mean, it, I, I just want you to elaborate more on this, how this would actually uh, lead to or bring back uh, criminal, uh, criminal libel law. Okay, thank you. But before then, I would want to respond to a few issues that Tom George raised. Um, there's one thing that I think he has to make clear. This is not the first place he's mentioned that, that using statistics from CDD. There's a reason why they are numbers. So I think he has to go beyond looking at the numbers that I'm mentioning to look at the reasons behind, behind the reason why queer persons are more likely to be suicidal than heterosexual persons because they lack support. There's no support. And that is one of the things we are doing to them right now. So right now, if anybody is going through a problem, they don't have any outlet to go seek support. But as a, as a heterosexual person, you can just go out there and talk to any doctor and then you are okay. So these are some of the reasons why those statistics speak to the higher numbers when it comes to issues of mental health and suicide amongst that community. So he has to go and look beyond the numbers and speak to the issues be that that are informing the numbers that are being put out there also i think he has to consider the fact that sexual risk is not limited to queer, queer, queer community their sexual risk even among heterosexuals heterosexuals that are engaged in anal sex are also a public health risk so if you are looking at that, saying that this is just a, a, a small a group and then if we halt their practices we save public health you are opening up a number of people if we are saying that heterosexual community in ghana is, is bigger you are opening up a number of women who are being exposed to heterosexual, to a number of, uh, to uh, same uh, anal sex, to a number of uh, sexual health risks that we have to pay attention to. And nobody is saying that we cannot have rights, whether as, as, a, as a bigger group or small group, we are saying that we have to pay attention to the issues at hand. And those are some of the issues that Michael was raising. And, his, and he also mentioned the fact that who ask of your sexual preferences. Nobody needs to ask. 
So I'm George, you need to pay attention to the actions and the, the hostility that is coming out, out of this deal. Now you just have to have effeminate characteristics and everybody assumes that you're queer because that is the image that we have put out there about who queer persons are. But we have a number of queer persons who may not even exhibit such traits and they are not at risk. I did a research and, it's, and I looked at homophobic violence in Ghana, when and where it counts. And it counts when people actually tend to think that if you have effeminate characteristics, then automatically you're queer. So people that are not even in the community are at risk right now. And they are being targeted. So you don't have to be asked by your boss to be able to, for them to for them to be able to say that okay, you're here. We have people that make posts and just bear the mere fact that they are men and exhibiting those streets, people already tag them as gay. And that has consequences. So they don't need to be asked. If that is the case, then we don't even need to criminalize because nobody will have to know what we do in our bedroom. Do we know what you do in your bedroom with your partner? No. We don't come to ask. So we assume that everything is perfect and you are okay. We don't know the kind of dangerous sex that may be happening in people's bedrooms, even uh, heterosexual. And then with the uh, media, you mentioned his opening statement that he assumed that the media is an ally. You are gagging the media straight away saying that it's either they align with parliament on this bill or that's it. They cannot support, but the media is there to be a voice to the people put out issues that are detrimental so that we can engage them as a society and find solutions to them. You don't just go as the media and say that ally, ally for which reason? To promote something that we think is detrimental. One way the media is going to have issues is the fact that if they are pressing issues that you're supposed to raise in the media concerning um, LGBT issues, now it's going to be very difficult because promotion is subjective once again, as I say. Talking about LGBT issues, may come with a different reason for which the media is reporting. Whatever somebody does with that information, you can never tell. But then you can be assumed that by the mere fact that you are publishing certain, certain news items, certain activities on your news item, then it means that you are liable. Right now, the media, the media outlets cannot show certain movies that are supposed to be having clear um, perspective. But for all you know, the content of that media item you're showing could be speaking to an issue that may be raised in this bill for whatever reason, but you cannot promote them anymore. And these are the things that we're saying that needs to be Need, needs to be addressed and these are things we need to pay attention to. What mm. I find surprising is that we are not going to regulate what people share on their social media outlets, what people info, what information people put out there. So if I find out that somebody, um, there's a care committee, so I can just make a post, oh look at these people, and then it's two men probably engaging in hugging or something, and then automatically I could be attacked for promoting fairness. But it could never be, it could be two friends, it could be two siblings hugging, and, and, and showing affection, and that's it. That has consequences. So this is the extent to which we are trying to limit and, and then curtail our ability to be able to pass on information and be held criminally liable for certain things that might not even be intended. Mm. Michael, so the law has been passed. So what next? Well, um, uh, Aisha, so I, I wanted to just go back to a little bit to something some judge has said about the Constitution. You see, I like to ground my argumentation in the constitution and just like i did tell some judge the last time we engaged i told him that the constitution is a neutral document and it's for this very reason that is why when the constitution says religion it doesn't prescribe for us what religion would you have and when the constitution says gender it doesn't prescribe for us to determine what gender that is but I just want to take him back to something he has said. That if I look in the Constitution, which part of the Constitution guarantees that people who identify as they want to identify should be, uh, um, uh, is, uh, is, is part of the constitutional uh, maker. So this idea of, or I'll call it this, this, this assumption of uh, uh, um, thinking which is operating on the fact that, you see, sometimes because we are heterosexual, and because we've never questioned heterosexuality since we have been born, so we're taking it for granted that it is what is supposed to be for every society. The point I'm trying to make is that the Constitution does not discriminate. And I've said it so many times that in matter of fact, there's no reason why we should even be having this conversation of LGBT rights. Because when the Constitution says all persons, it means all persons. It doesn't create, it doesn't create separate categories of persons. It says all persons. So 
why are you making the constitutional argument to cause uh, or to sanction the discrimination of a, a population of the country? We have to be very careful. Like I said, I, I'm a firm believer in rights. And I will go to bat for any person whose rights have been infringed on, whether they are gay, whether they are lesbian, whether they are uh, from their tribal life, whether they are minoritized on any other ground, I will defend their right to be who they are. So we need to make the clear distinction. As I said, if you want to prescribe the act, if you feel like the act is what you want to prescribe, then make the law to do that. But the idea that, should I say that I am I'm gay? Should I hold out that I'm gay? And automatically, I should be arrested and uh, even if you look at the, uh, the duty to report, I'm supposed to report to assemblymen, MPs, uh, which part of our, uh, 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 how do you call it, which part of our, our, judicial, uh, 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 our police system, reporting system, have an MP to be reported to? What is the MP going to do? You know, we have so it's many problems in this country to be worried about. And to think that this is what is important for us. I mean, that's a story state for our republic. It is a really story state for our republic. That in this moment of economic crisis, in this moment when people cannot afford to put a single meal on the table to eat, but we, our political leaders who we've elected, who are running a $100,000 car, Think that it is the sexuality of what people do in their bedroom that they should concern about. It's a story state for our republic. Well, uh, Sam George, you've seen the resistance coming from all angles. In fact, the Amnesty International has indicated that it will go to court if this uh, bill is passed into law. And today you're hearing uh, the coalition of the, the group that is against the passage led by uh, Professor Odrigajekpo, who say they would also be heading to the Supreme Court. It does look like you are not done with your job. There, there's still more obstacles that you need to clear. Well, Michael ends by saying that I drive a hundred thousand dollar car, and so that should my focus should not be on the sexuality of people. Well, your whole job is about getting funds from the aberration of other people, and you think that you have a moral right to talk about something that's alone. I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Listen, Michael, Michael, Michael. You reference you reference all persons. You reference Article Seventeen. I've, I've said to you on this platform already this evening, don't Sam read George, the Constitution in I'll bits. Article 17.4. Michael, let me give you an education, please. Article 17.4, the Article 17 that you say says all persons. Go and read 17.4. I've told you, don't read the Constitution in bits. Read it as a whole. Article 17.4 says, nothing in this article that you have referred to shall prevent Parliament from enacting laws that are reasonable, necessary to provide A, for the implementation of policies and programs aimed at redressing social, economic, or educational imbalance in the Ghanaian society. When you have people who are born with six fingers, it is not considered, or six digits, it's not considered the norm, because it's a one in a million occurrence. The fact that you have individuals who choose on their own to carry out what society does not consider normal, does not mean that we must make it normal. And that is an educational and societal imbalance that Parliament has rightfully passed the law under Article 17.4 to deal with. Go and also read Article 39, the cultural imperatives that have been imposed on the state. So read the Constitution as a whole and don't read it in bits and pieces. And Amanda makes the point that I should go and look at what informs the statistics. Ah, Amanda, you are saying that people's aberration their, 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 ab uh, their abhorrent sexual preferences makes them suicidal because they need help. And you think that we should now accept that aberrant behavior, that, that, that abhorrent practice, and now have to deal with giving them... Why? Is it because you think that that would open a room for you to now do research? But listen, people do research today into pedophilia. People do research into money laundering. 
People do research into all kinds of vices. It doesn't mean they have to advocate for it. The moment you begin to equate advocacy to research, you've missed the point, Amanda. That can never be the basis of research. Research can never be equated to advocacy. And the moment you do that, I see you've lost the plot. <laughs> okay, so the point we'll make here is this. Amnesty International. And you see, another point Amanda makes, that she's seen a rise in violence. I challenge you, Amanda. And you see, we did this when we had the open session for all of these allies to come into parliament and appear before parliament. We asked them for evidence, evidence of either a job or, or, or a hotel or any discrimination against a person, wrongfully so. None of them could produce an evidence. On this show, I'm calling Amanda out and saying she should give us one instance, one, of increased violence against a person because of this bill. Mm. Look, it's easy, to, it's easy to say the things you are saying, but trust me, so long as God gives me breath, I will continue to hold all of you to strict proof because it is clear that the intent behind all of this advocacy is economic. <laughs> Aisha, let us, let us call people out. It is economic. It's about the funding they will receive. Do you, do the funding you, you proof, receive... Do you have proof, oh, Absolutely. That would be CDD is that would sponsored... Be no, CDD's research, and Michael is here, CDD's research on this bill was not funded from their own. It was funded by donor partners who have an interest in pushing LGBTQ. You should deny it. Amanda's research is sponsored by groups that are pro-LGBTQ. Don't deny this. This, uh, this is fact. So if people are thinking about the money they get for their research, and for that, they think that parliament should sit down for the innocence of our children to be taken away, where are we going as a country? In terms of accent, uh, uh, they cannot deny. They should state the source of your funding. Okay, I am challenging you to state the source of your so, funding. M Michael, Michael, so, give me a so, second. I'll, I'll come to I you can. too. All right. So go ahead and respond in one minute, I please. Can. This very state, this very Ghana state we live in today, right? Who, I mean, where are we? Who, who is funding us today? Oh, so, so you are not disputing that you are funded by groups that are interested in LGBTQ. You are not, you are not disputing it. Because we need to call the CDD out on this. The CDD does fantastic work, but on this matter, we will call you out. You ask him to deny or confirm, so he's doing that. Michael, go ahead. The state that some judge is a minister, is that a member of parliament for, is it not being funded partly by donors? So what is he talking about funding? But and you mean back to the parliament is funded by donors? Was, no, what's the point he made? To go back to the constitutional argument he made, look, no, he should, Aisha, let's not run away from your source of funding. Michael, let's establish it. You've not answered my question. Are you funded or not? Michael, can you give him a direct answer on Are you funded or not by pro-LGBTQ groups? Allow him to respond. He's not answered the question. He says yes. But no one funder has given us money to go and, and uh, uh, to go out on the limit advocate for men to go sleep with men. And I have, we have said that disclaimer so many times. That this issue, for us as CDD, is a human rights issue. 